The music segment editor in WISE strongly resembles the timeline of a conventional DAW. Just as in a DAW, clips can be freely moved, copied, trimmed, and looped, providing a lot of creative possibilities even after the music assets have been imported into your project. To explore editing clips in WISE, we'll edit some music already imported into the Cube demo game. Here we see a music segment for the game's combat music displayed in the music segment editor. Go ahead and play it. This is the combat music for the game. As we scroll down, we can see the various tracks. All right, now the last three tracks are rhythm parts, uh, and you can see that they only play for four of the eight bars in this segment. Uh, let's take a listen to them. Now the reason that only four bars were delivered is because in the DAW, the parts were repeated every four bars. Now while they could have been doubled in length before they were exported from the DAW, this would have taken twice the memory. Instead, we can quickly loop a clip within the music segment editor's timeline. Um, this is done by moving the small blue square icons in the lower corners of a clip. Uh, let's just do this for the main percussion line, and we'll drag it to the right to where it ends at the beginning of bar nine. Now you'll see a vertical dashed line denotes where the clip begins to repeat. Now remember, this does not increase memory use in the game, as the same audio source is referenced each time the clip is looped. Now it's possible to move multiple clips simultaneously by using a marquee selection. Uh, so let's say I wanted to move uh, these clips to a different position. We can drag a selection area around them all and drag them. Uh, but in this case, what I wanna do is I wanna build the rhythm part by having the hi-hat and the uh, percussion instruments start halfway through. Uh, to select discontiguous regions, hold down the control key, and we'll select these two, and then drag them to where they start at measure five. Uh, now, again, to build it even just a little more, we'll have the percussion part actually not come in until the last two measures. And so if I deselect everything by clicking somewhere in the background, I can now click on and drag the small blue icon uh, to the right and trim the region where it only now starts at measure seven. Now let's go take a listen to that. Here the hi-hat comes in. And now the rest of the percussion part. The arpeggio track found at the top of the music segment editor provides a synthetic pulse to the music. Let's take a listen to it. Let's turn off the rhythm tracks we were just listening to. And go up to the top and take a listen to just the arpeggio track. Now, although only one version of this track has been provided, it's possible to make additional variations in order to create more variety for the part. This track has already been configured as a random step music track with a few subtracks that we'll use to create variations of the arpeggio track. Uh, we'll start by right-clicking the arpeggio clip and choose copy. Uh, now it's copied into the clipboard. And so we'll right-click on one of the empty subtracks and choose paste clips at play cursor. And we'll do this for each of the subtracks that we want to make variations for. Go ahead and do that again here. Now we're going to force usage on the subtrack we're going to work on right now. Uh, that way we can listen to just that particular uh, track. You'll hear it sounds the same. Now to make a variation, we'll delete out some of the sections so the original part will come in and out every other measure. Uh, this can be done by first splitting the single clip into uh, multiple smaller clips, and then we'll delete the ones that we don't want to hear. To split a clip, uh, we use the playhead. Uh, I'm going to make the first split at measure two. Uh, so we have position the playhead to measure two, right click the clip we're going to modify, and then choose the split on play cursor command. Notice the key command is the letter S. Now we've split that clip uh, at measure two, and I'm going to keep doing that at every bar line, now using the key command S, to quickly divide this clip 
into multiple parts. All right, now we can go back and we can select the clips that we don't want to hear. And so starting with the first one, we'll select it and then we'll select every other one. Again, to select discontiguous regions, we can hold the control key. And now to delete them, I'll press the delete key. Now note for Mac users, use uh, the function key with the delete key in order for this to work. Now let's take a listen to what it sounds like. As the arpeggio part comes in and out, the transition may feel a bit abrupt. You can resolve this by using fades. This is done by dragging the clip fade in and fade out handles in the upper corners of each clip. On the first clip, we'll drag the fade in handle to the right, and then the fade out handle will drag to the left. In fact, we can even right click on a fade and we have different fade types we can choose from, but we'll go ahead and use the defaults for this. And we'll just do this on the remaining clips. And let's take a listen. All right, now we can hear how the arpeggios will enter and exit the mix nice and smoothly from this point on. It's also possible to do more complex automation of a music track's volume, low pass, or high pass filters using the same type of offline breakpoint automation used in DAWs. Let's use this to create a filter sweep on the third variation of the arpeggio music track. So we'll go ahead and set the force usage button on it to hear that part. Okay, there it is. Now to accomplish our goal, we're going to need to take a look at the envelope buttons at the top of the music segment editor. Here we see a low pass button, and we see a dark blue line up here at the bottom of each clip. Uh, for this, this means that the value of the low pass filter in essence has no effect uh, over the entire range of the clip. We can see the same thing for the high pass. We see a light blue line. And then for volume, you'll see a red line at the top, which indicates that there's no offset from whatever the normal volume of the clip is. Uh, now, we're gonna do a high pass filter, so we'll go back to high pass. And then in order to make a change, we need to use the control points. Uh, so for in this case, there's a control point at the beginning and at the end of the clip. If I drag this up, this means that the value of the high pass filter is increasing over time. If we listen to it, we'll hear that over time, the lows start to get filtered out until just the high frequencies are heard, until eventually we don't hear anything at all. Now this isn't the effect that I want. Uh, I'm gonna drag this control point back down. In this case, I want it to filter out the lows uh, for about halfway through the part, and then I want that to bring them back in again, but I never wanna completely not hear the track. Uh, so to do this, we'll add another control point. Uh, we can just click, uh, double click onto the, uh, onto the line and a new control point is added. And then I'm gonna add another one here at about measure five. This one I'll drag up, but not all the way. This means that we'll be filtering out the lows uh, quite a bit, but not entirely. So we'll still be able to hear the part. Furthermore, we can right click on the line and we can choose a curve. Just to smooth that out a little bit. All right, now let's take a listen. There, the lows are filtered out. And now they come back in towards the end. 